Team La Borderless is the permanent digital art museum in Tokyo. It used to be in Adaiba and moved to a new, more central location in Azabudai Hills in February 2024. I definitely recommend it to anyone. It's a unique experience that goes beyond language barriers and it's perfect for a rainy day. Today I've got tips and a walkthrough plus how to get tickets, but first we're starting off with how to get there. So it's in a new complex called Azabudai Hills near Tokyo Tower. It's directly connected to Kamiacho Station on the metro. Roppongi Ichome Station's also very close. We're going to Azabu Juban Station because it's a more direct route from Shinjuku where we're staying and we don't mind a walk. It's also the setting for Sailor Moon. We're just walking from Azabu Juban Station and there's a nice view of Tokyo Tower up ahead. It's quite close to Team Lab Borderless. And there's the new skyscraper at Azabudai Hills. It's the tallest building or skyscraper in Japan. It's the tallest building in Tokyo and the whole of Japan. The Sky Tree and Tokyo Tower are taller, but they're classed as towers, not buildings. When Tokyo Torch near Tokyo Station's finished in 2027, that'll become the new tallest building. The location's not immediately obvious. Google Maps isn't quite right. It's better to search for Azabudai Hills than Team Lab Borderless. Entry is timed, so make sure you leave yourself enough time to walk through and find it. Team Lab Borderless is in the garden plaza in the basement. We're here in front of the skyscraper and the garden plaza is all the way over here. Here's a sign to Team Lab Borderless. It looks like you can go in Garden Plaza C and get to it. And there's Tokyo Tower again over there. The tall skyscraper is just to the right there. And this is quite a nice garden outside. There's a little stream running through it. On signs, they also call it the Digital Art Museum. The garden plazas are connected, so just go into any of them and follow the signs. Team Lab Borderless is underground in the basement. From the station, that was about a 15 minutes walk. There was one road that was a bit of a slope. And here's the entrance. At the moment, they're letting in 10 to 10.30 and 10.30 till 11. It's quarter past 10. The entrance is indoors, so you can wait inside if you're too early for your time slot and even if it's raining you'll be okay getting here a bit early. The sign by the entrance says that tickets are sold out today. It's the first week of March at the moment but it only opened last month so it hasn't been open very long. There's also a sign saying this is not Team Lab Planets. Team Lab Planets is over in Adaiba in Toyosu. There's a video about that on my channel and I've also written a comparison of borderless and planets to help you choose which to go to. There's a link in the description. The short answer is planets is smaller, it's temporary currently until the end of 2027 while borderless is permanent and only planets has the water rooms. Borderless is more about looking at beautiful mesmerizing things and almost the whole thing is flat hard floor that's more accessible while planets is more physical and possibly more fun. This is a core cool view at the entrance. It's causing a bit of a bottleneck with everyone taking pictures. Just before you even show your tickets, as you go in on the right, there's a locker room because it's nice to not to have to carry your stuff with you. There is a section here for uh, buggies, push chairs, and you could put your luggage here. You tie it up with this. Is that free actually? Yep, these are free. You don't need money to operate these. There's low down ones and higher up ones as well. And here are the lockers. There's quite a lot of them in here. These are large enough for a backpack. Probably two backpacks would fit in there. There are also bins here if you've got any trash with you. And there are lockers for your umbrella. This is a busy station today because it's a rainy day. They're free to use, they're combination locks. There is an app so you can read more about the different installations. You can also interact with the infinite crystal world, although you don't have to do that, you can enjoy that without the app. It also says avoid long lines, number tickets are issued via the app when the artwork space is crowded. That will notify you when your time slot is approaching. When I was there at the start of March, they weren't using that. It was sold out, but it was at the end of the off season, so it's possible capacity was lower at that time of year. I'll tell you all about how to book tickets at the end of the video. As it only opened in February 2024, I would recommend booking tickets in advance. You can easily check availability on their website. I'll come back to that later. They let everyone in in batches to space everyone out and you watch a very short orientation video at the start. 
This does contain a walkthrough, so if you want to keep it a surprise, look away now and listen to the next section like a podcast. It's difficult to make a video without telling you anything, so there will be some details about what's there, even in the audio. There are chapters on the video, but there are tips all the way through. I'll tell you when it's safe to look again with no spoilers. But I should say, as with most places, watching it on a YouTube video doesn't compare to the experience of actually being there, with everything surrounding you, with the music music and feeling the atmosphere of each room. It smells of flowers in here. It's so pretty. It's also quite hard to tell how big it is. That wall to the side is mirrors, but not all of it is mirrors. There are lots of different rooms to walk around and experience. There isn't a map or anything to guide you and there are lots of different routes you could take. The idea is to awaken your sense of exploration and some of the rooms are quite hidden so you have to search around to see everything. This room smells different again. It said artworks can move between rooms and I saw these guys walking into the flower room. They've gone away now. <laughs> I think the butterflies follow where you walk. It's really hard to tell how long that corridor is with all the mirrors. Oh, this is one of the famous rooms that you recognise from all the pictures. Once you've been here before, you can recognise which parts are from other artworks. The projections aren't preset. They're generated in real time according to where everyone is in the room. So take your time and notice what's happening around you. See the water's flowing around my feet. Remember to touch the walls and look at the ground where you're standing. Sometimes the projections are interactive, so you can play and have fun with them. Yeah, I can't see it. Flowers blooming where everyone is on the walls. Ah! Flowers have been generated. This is one of the few parts that isn't flat ground, so if you don't do slopes or unusual flooring, you can still see everything. It's a lot more accessible than Team Lab Planets and the previous Team Lab Borderless when it was in Odaiba. The walls are so tall that when you're there, it feels really immersive. It's a nice view from up there. It is quite dark in places. At the start, they advise you to move around slowly so you can be careful, but there's nothing to trip over and it didn't feel unsafe at any point. I found the music and the whole atmosphere very calming and relaxing. What is going on with this? Oh, these, these are poles and there's loads of them, but it looks like it goes on forever. <laughs> well, the ground was slightly uneven there. I really can't tell how big this is. Hey, I'm gonna lose you. Oh, that's a mirror. They must have to window lean this a lot. Oh, there's fishes on the ceiling. In its new location, Team Lab Borderless has four new rooms. I thought this was one of them, but it's actually just a room that I missed the first time around. The projections change over time. You can see the flowers blooming as this one's starting to change. That means you can spend time in one room or come back to it later and it might be different. And everyone has a unique experience. It's like lily pads. Oh, they're quite wobbly. That is an interesting effect. As you walk along the room, the lily, the lily pads get lower, so it feels like you're coming out of the water. No entry. Yeah, this goes through that corridor. That's where I reached. I stuck my head in earlier. All oh, right. I have absolutely no sense of direction, so I didn't really manage to map out the layout in my head, but that's all part of the fun. Just relax and enjoy wandering. There are signs to the exit, the bathrooms and the tea house, so you won't get lost in here forever. If you keep walking, you will come to the exit or somewhere you recognise. <laughs> Phil just seems to send himself in a mirror. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera screen. There, we should just see something. <laughs> it's my favourite room, I love this one. I do have to be dragged out of this room. Entry into Team Lab Borderless is timed, but once you're in, you can stay as long as you want to. A couple of the newer rooms have signs telling you roughly how long to stay, or staff gently ushering you along because they're more popular. But you can go round each one as many times as you want, and most rooms you can stay as long as you like. Several rooms like this one have a mirrored floor, so think about what you wear. They do have wraparound skirts you can borrow if you want to. I've worn shorts underneath my dress, so I'm all good today. But I think everyone's too mesmerised by the display to really be looking. I hope. In the crystal world, you can use the app to summon elements, but you can equally enjoy it just by watching. It's raining. 
the fish and sea creatures in the aquarium are all coloured in by people. There is a part where you can colour them in and they scan them in and then they start to swim around the walls. At the moment there's a queue to do the colouring in. You can sit down in that section through there. There are some bathrooms inside Team Lab Borderless, inside the ticket gates. They said this room has large edges sticking out, so be careful. I guess this is what they're talking about. This room was very dark, but that's also when it's most effective, before your eyes adjust and you start to work out what's a mirror and what's real. <laughs> I can't tell what's going on with this, it looks really weird. It's so strange. It really looks like there's a wall there. Is that how the 3DS works? It's not, but this was a really effective illusion. It looked like there was something there, but there wasn't. There isn't really a cafe, but there is NT House, which is as much of an experience as all the other rooms. At this one, you can only go in if you buy a drink. It seems a little pricey compared with other cafes in Japan, but it's cheaper than UK prices and the experience is worth it. Here's the menu for the tea house. They've got various green teas, barley tea latte, chamomile tea, and frozen green tea coconut gelato. These mysterious tea brews here. She gave us these little round things. They're about the size of tea lights to put on the table, one for each drink. I think it's too dark to see anything. You sit at long counters, but it's quite spaced out and they serve your drinks from the middle. Oh, mine's blooming already. It's magical. <laughs> it's very calm and feels like a ritual, a kind of alternative tea ceremony. Several items were sold out. We had cold green tea and cold yuzu green tea. You broke yours now, Pia. Oh, another one's blooming. Cool. <laughs> the flowers are on the table. This table is made of tatami mats. And new flowers are blooming now. And there, someone's got the ice cream. And that has leaves and vines growing out of it butterflies. It's actually less busy in the tea house than I thought it would be. I thought everyone would want to do it, but we didn't really have to wait only for like a minute. And it's not that crowded in here because it's dark and it's quite spread out. It doesn't feel crowded at all. Team Lab also has a ramen restaurant called Vegan Ramen Uzu. There's one outside Team Lab Planets in Tokyo in Odaiba and one in Kyoto, which I'm sure would be just as magical an experience. This is the difference with uh, Team Lab Borderless and Planets. At Planets, the corridors between the rooms are really dark, but at Borderless, I suppose it is borderless because the artworks flow between the rooms and there's always something to look at. The artworks change over time, so if you come back to a room that you saw earlier, it might be different if you come back later. And you probably will come back to the same rooms because there isn't a map, so you have to wander around and explore to find everything. My sense of direction is terrible, so it's really hard for me to tell where we've been and where we haven't been. These projections are on curtains of smoke. It's really effective. It's changing now, what's happening? I think we're inside the curtain. <laughs> it's actually mesmerizing, a bit like watching a waterfall. This is one of the new rooms. The arrangement of the spheres is for the beauty of the continuity of light created by the presence of people. Luckily, you don't have to understand the mathematical equation to enjoy the room. They're limiting the amount of people who go in at each time so everyone can enjoy it properly. I'm guessing this must be one of the rooms where the app tells you to come back later if it's busier than it is today. While you're waiting, you can see the room through a two-way mirror. Wow, so pretty. You're right, you can't see where the queue is. I love this new room. Team Lab seem to have realized that glittery, shiny, colorful infinity rooms is what people want. I can definitely see why they limit your time in here, but there's nothing stopping you going around again if you want to. That room was beautiful. They had a sign before you went in saying, please stay here for about three minutes and don't touch anything. They also had people kind of gently shooing you along so you don't spend too long. You could spend a long time in there, it was so pretty. I call this the Instagram corridor because it's got mirrors all down one side and earlier there was a huge row of people taking photos of themselves. Now the waterfall room is cherry blossom style. Now we're searching around trying to find the rooms we haven't seen and checking all the doorways. This is another new room. This is beautiful. It's like the factory version of the room that we were just in. 
It says you're not allowed to touch it. It's so smooth, it's so relaxing watching them. It looks like it goes on forever. We followed signs to the exit and there's an escalator going up, but there is an escalator going down as well, so we can return if this isn't the right way. Okay, those escalators go up to the shop and the actual exit. So we're just going back in to check if we've missed anything. We've been around sticking to the right hand wall to try and make sure we've seen everything. And now we're going around again, sticking to the left hand wall. We keep going into the crystal well because I think it's in the middle. So there's several entrances. This layout means that half the people are enjoying the artworks for the first time and the other half are all milling around trying to find all the rooms they haven't seen before. It does encourage exploration, which is fun, and discovery. And while it is a bit frustrating when you don't know if you've seen everything or you feel like maybe there's something you've missed, it does mean that if there's anything you want to see again, you're free to just wander around and go wherever you like. So if you want to do the Crystal World five million times, you can. Despite searching as much as we could, we still miss this light sculpture room. It's similar to one I'd seen in the previous location in Adiba, but I don't know where it was. Because there isn't a map, the best way to enjoy it is to expect to not see everything and just make peace with that. Then you won't be disappointed and just enjoy what you do see. You can see all the rooms on the Team Lab website, so you could check that beforehand so you know what there is to look for, or go with a no spoilers approach and not know if you've seen everything for sure. Or you could look it up on your phone while you're there. It seems a bit busier now than when we first arrived, so a tip is to get an early time slot if you can near when it opens, because at that point there's only the first hour's worth of people there, and then everyone stays for quite a few hours, so as you go through the day, there will be more people here. Even though it's the start of March, so it's not the busiest time of year, today is sold out, so this is the maximum amount of people who will be here. If you're a no spoilers person, it's safe to look now. Looks like lots of people brought their suitcases along. They advise taking your wallet with you so you can spend money. You will need it for the tea house and there is a section where you can buy customised merchandise. The lockers are completely free, you don't need coins for them or anything. And the same goes for the stroller parking, the buggy pushchair parking and the umbrella lockers. And there are still quite a few lockers free, even though it's got busier now than when we first arrived. All these ones with keys are still empty, so there's plenty of room. It's worth putting your coat in there. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, it's much nicer walking around without your coat. If you look up Team Lab Borderless on Google Maps, the location isn't quite where it is. The blue dot is where we are now, and that other red dot is where it says Team Lab Borderless is. So you need to head to Azabudai Hills and then look out for signs to the Digital Art Museum. So there's Azabudai Hills and the tallest skyscraper or building. I'm gonna to need to check which that is. And just across the road, you've got a view of Tokyo Tower. If you go up to floor 33 of the main skyscraper at Azabudai Hills, there's a free observation deck with a great view of Tokyo Tower. At the start of March, a few weeks before the start of cherry blossom season, there are some early blooming sakura outside. Such an interesting building at Azabudai Hills. I have been to Team Lab Borderless before, before it moved, when it used to be in Adaiba, and actually it was more different than I expected it to be. There are a lot of the same rooms and there are some new ones, but they've actually taken away quite a large section of it. It is still a large place to visit, we spent about two hours, 40 minutes looking around and I think if you hadn't been there before you'd probably spend longer because you spend longer in some of the rooms sitting and watching as, and seeing how they change. The major parts they've taken away are what used to be upstairs in the old one which is the athletics forest. That included a lot of the attractions for kids and the more physical sorts of ones like there was one where you climbed across different poles and the room with the giant balloons that light up. There also used to be a giant slide and it feels a bit like they've taken away some of the more fun and physical and interactive attractions but there is still a lot to enjoy. All the beautiful rooms are still there. It is mesmerizing and I did enjoy going again even though I've seen it before and I've seen some of the rooms quite a few times because some of them like the Crystal World or at Team Lab Planets as well. I was thinking how as they move Team Lab Borderless it gives them an opportunity to change anything they wanted to or 
um, adapt it based on what was working in the original one. And it did seem like the projections are better at this new one. And the layout is different. It's more spacious, so the, the flow around is better. And the transition between the rooms is really good. If you recognize what's in some of the rooms, you do recognize some of the artworks flowing and all mixing together. And that's part of the borderless theme. I bought the tickets on the official website. If you go through the booking process, you can check the availability at different time slots so you know when you need to buy tickets. It emails you and then the day before it emails you a reminder and that's when your QR code is available, which is your ticket. You get one QR code for your whole group all together. You can just show it on your phone and scan the QR code as you go through the ticket gates. So, Team Lab Borderless or Team Lab Planets? Before, I always said, without a doubt, Team Lab Borderless because it's so much bigger. Now, I do think Planets is definitely worth it because it is more fun in a way and it's got more interactive elements with the water rooms and the different floor surfaces. So I think you can definitely enjoy both of them. But if you only have time for one, I'd probably go to Team Lab Borderless because it is bigger. There's more there to enjoy. It's a more comprehensive experience. Team Lab Borderless is also much more accessible because most of the floors are flat, hard surfaces. Unlike Team Lab Planets where you've got the water rooms, you've got squishy floors and different surfaces to go over. On the way in and out, there are stairs. I'm not sure if there's an accessible route, so I'll check that for you, which did seem a bit odd. I'm thinking there must be. Tokyo Tower is just a really short walk away from Azavida Hills and Team Lab Boardless, so you could visit that too in the same day. There's an observation deck up there. I hope that gives you an idea of what to expect and some tips. I am a Team Lab fan and I hate to say it, but I think the original version was the best one, but I still really enjoyed it, even though I've been before. I think it's worth going to other Team Lab experiences around Japan too. I'll have a video coming up about Team Lab Forest in Fukuoka, which is really fun. And if you're in Germany, they're currently building a Team Lab Borderless in Hamburg, which looks very similar to the original and best one from Tokyo. That's scheduled to open summer 2025. If you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll see you next week with more Japan videos on Thursdays.